See You Now is a podcast highlighting the innovative and human-centered solutions that nurses are coming up with to solve for today's most challenging healthcare problems. Created in collaboration with Johnson & Johnson and the American Nurses Association and hosted by nurse economist and health tech specialist, Shauna Butler. Hey, See You Now listeners, it's Shauna Butler. Welcome to May and our first See You Now episode kicking off National Nurses Month. Observed around the world, May 12 is International Nurses Day, chosen for being the birth anniversary of statistician, social activist, and nurse Florence Nightingale, who is celebrated for her pioneering role in modern nursing and health system innovation. National Nurses Month is a call to attention and dedicated to highlighting the impact nurses have on people, communities, nations, and the planet. Their essential role in keeping people safe and healthy and health systems operating and caring. And given that May is also Mental Health Awareness Month, this year we're particularly mindful of the impact that healthcare has had on nurses, of the specific challenges and dangers nurses have encountered, endured, and continue to endure, and the need to express our appreciation for nurses in terms of urgent system-level action, support, and investment. During May, we'll feature stories that cover many facets of nursing expertise, talent, inventiveness, and the actions that leaders, organizations, and society can take to support, protect, and invest in nurses in ways that ultimately protect the public and our health systems. To lead off, we open with a rather unlikely story of nurses, singing, and stardom, and the surprising healing power of the arts. Originally, it was an email that was sent to all the nurses throughout the organization looking for nurses that sang to participate in a fundraiser. It didn't even matter really for me what it was for. It was an opportunity to sing. One of my coworkers, she's like, Keisha, you need to audition for this choir. And it's so awkward. Pick a song, no music, nothing. You're just singing at your phone. And I'm just like, this is so nuts. It sounded like they were all in a room together. It sounded like a choir. All of these harmonies came together from all different places, different sizes and shapes and colors and talents. It was a wonderful fundraiser. Fast forward a couple of months, a casting director called and she said she saw the tape on YouTube and she'd love to invite these nurses to try out for America's Got Talent. Our marketing team, our PR team, they're risk takers and they saw this opportunity as something that can truly show America what nurses go through and this struggle that they're in. But meanwhile, these people hadn't met. They were still alone. They were still battling COVID. I don't know if the public really understood. We were all dealing with it in silence. As a leader, I saw a lot of my staff running out of gas. They had nothing left in their tank. It burned them out. It burned, it burned yeah. all of us out. The nurses kept saying, is it going to end? Do you think it's going to end? Our mission, our ministry was Let's get out there and let's help our fellow nurses understand that they're going to be okay. From an organizational standpoint, we have wonderful leadership who are always supportive of the nurses. And when we were given this opportunity to surround them with the resources they needed, it was a guiding principle that we used in every plan that we made. We will give them the resources they need to succeed. This choir is very, very similar to the teams we work with in the hospitals. People coming together with the same mission to work together towards a goal. America deserved to see who these humans are and every experience that we have. I'm just overjoyed at the more America can learn about them. Like it really brought people together. It was an unbelievable instrument of unity. And to me, what's better than that during the pandemic to be able to bring people yeah. joy and bring them together. That 
is the joyful sound and voices of the Northwell Help Nurse Choir. In this episode, we meet two nurse choir members and the choir manager and hear their account of the extreme circumstances that many nurses encounter as part of their practice, how a health system's leadership demonstrates their commitment to the well-being and flourishing of their team members, and the unique power of the arts to care for the soul of healthcare. My name is Allison Lowenfeld, and I work in corporate marketing for Northwell Health. Northwell is New York's largest healthcare system. We're made up of 23 individual hospitals. We have hundreds of ambulatory locations. We have 78,000 employees, over 17,000 nurses. We have wonderful leadership who are always supportive of us, supportive of the nurses, supportive of the organization. And our marketing team, our PR team, they're risk takers. And they saw this opportunity as something that can truly show America what nurses go through and this struggle that they're in. Prior to joining the choir, I managed the thought leadership events for Northwell Health. And as part of the choir, I help to organize the organization around the choir's needs and their appearances when they travel around the country. I watch every appearance they did on America's Got Talent and I listen to the way that America responded to them and the way that the judges respected them and the way that they gave nursing a new face and a name. And I'm so very proud and couldn't have asked for anything beyond this in my 2021. Most people were behind their screens and I was traveling the country and learning about these people and falling in love with them and being part of this family. And I feel beyond blessed and lucky. I'm Keisha Jaboyne. I live in Queens, New York. I am a registered nurse on a high-risk antepartum and postpartum unit. I'm a soprano, one of the highest singers. Um, (laughs) My favorite song that we sing is I'm Not Giving Up. We sang that on America's Got Talent. And it speaks to our resilience. I thank God for my high voice and the fact that I'm able to be a part of this amazing experience. My name is Winnie Mealy. I live on Long Island and I am the perioperative services director at Plainview Hospital, which is a community hospital out on Long Island. I am a tenor and I sing with the gentleman because I can sing very low as a female, which is very rare. And I love my group. They're like my sons. And my favorite song, uh, we sang Rise Up. And for me, at that point in my career and my life was a beautiful testament to what we were doing in our professional life was rising up and doing what needed to be done. And I'm so proud to be part of this choir and Northwell Health and I'm grateful for the opportunity and what they do for nursing. Tell me how you first heard about the Northwell Help Nurse Choir. So originally, it was an email that was sent to all the nurses throughout the organization, and they were looking for nurses that sang to participate in a fundraiser for Nurses Heroes Live, which had to do with the nursing shortage. And I was an assistant nurse manager at the time, and my inbox is flooded with emails, but one of my coworkers, she saw the email and she's like, Keisha, you sing, right? And I'm like, yeah, I do. She's like, I know you sing at church every weekend. You need to audition for this choir. And I'm like, no, like, I'm not going to go join a nurse choir. And I remember sending my video in the last day they were accepting auditions. And then when we found out that they auditioned over two to 300 nurses and they chose 50 out of that and I happened to be one of the 50 I was like psyched I'm like I can't believe it you know so Winnie what about your story of when this email inviting you to audition for a choir arrived like Keisha I read the email and I kind of didn't really digest it and then I remember going back and reading it again and 
I just live with music, everything I do, everywhere I go. And then I say, you know what, Winnie, just do it. Mm -hmm. So it was a 30 second video into your phone. So awkward. You know, you pick a song, no music, nothing. You're just singing at your phone. And I'm just like, this is so nuts. So I was going to give up. And you remember this, over 17,000 nurses in Northwell. So I was shocked when I got the email. But I think for me, it didn't even matter for me what it was for. It was an opportunity to sing. And so I was like, this yeah. is going to be great. Allison, can I get you to chime in and give the backstory? So you needed to put together a choir. How did that unfold? So Northwell partners with a lot of different organizations. One of the relationships is with an organization called Nurse Heroes, and they approached us. They were doing a fundraiser for nurses. They said, do you have any nurses who could sing? He said, you know, we have a lot of talented nurses. We have 17,000 nurses. I'm sure we could find a couple. So we did the auditions, had a partner who reviewed all 250 or so audition tapes. We did this Hollywood version of a choir singing in a COVID time where they sang to their phones and magic happened behind the scenes. It sounded like they were all in a room together. It sounded like a choir. It was a wonderful fundraiser. And, and if you fast forward a couple of months, a casting director, Destiny was her name. Destiny called and she said she saw the tape on YouTube and she'd love to invite these nurses to try out for America's Got Talent. But meanwhile, these people hadn't met and this pain and the anguish that they dealt with every day, I had no idea. I knew we worked for an organization that was battling the front lines of COVID. But me, I was safe and at home and at my computer. These guys were putting on their armor every day and truly battling on the front lines. And to give them this, this glimmer of hope to be able to sing and to do something that they love and then put them in a room together and, and listen and feel the magic of them coming together. I'm the luckiest to be able to witness this. So, um... We've got a little bit of this this history of you need to have a choir put together. You send out an email. You've got nurses who are blindly singing into a phone using a <laughs> range of technology to get this over. You've got folks who are reviewing these auditions, putting together a choir that then performs virtually. Take us to the moment of bringing everybody together to be in the physical presence of singing together and hearing each other sing together. From the organizational side, the opportunity came to us and we knew we had the voices, we knew we had the people, but my biggest concern was that they had never met before. Like I said, Hollywood had made them sound and look like a family, but they had never met. And my biggest fear was, how are we going to go on stage in Hollywood and convince Simon Cowell that these people are a family? And you can't make that up. You can't fake that. So we surrounded the choir with every resource they needed to succeed. We got a choir director, we got a choreographer, we got them the time off of work and surrounded them with this, this big warm North Wall hug. And the first time they were in a room together was March 5th, 2021. And we had the choir director there and I'm standing outside of the door and I heard the click, click, click of, of Lean On Me start playing. And it was, this magic, I, it just happened and they knew their parts and it was it was beautiful. And from an organizational standpoint, we just figured it out. We had never put a choir together before. We'd never gone on national television, like we do news conferences, like we have the media come into an, an emergency department. But I mean, even getting a videographer to come in the walls of a hospital, anyone who's done that knows that's like one of the most difficult things you could possibly do. Fast forward a couple of months, we had the entire crew of America's Got Talent wanting to come and film a hometown visit. Like we had never done these things before. So every bit of the way, it was a learning process for us and figuring it out. But we are so lucky to come from this organization that I'm telling you has supported them from every single need that we've asked for, we've gotten it. And we couldn't have done it without our leadership support. So Winnie, let's talk about your experience I'm going to tell you something. I I was, I had a little lilt in my voice. I was singing with the radio. I was really looking forward to this. I was excited because I didn't know where it was going, but everybody showed up on the money. Everybody was prepared. The first time they turned the music on and we sang it once through, we finished. It was dead silence. 
and I said out loud, I don't know about you guys, but I have the chills. All of these harmonies came together from all different people, different places, different sizes and shapes and colors and talents. And yet it didn't matter. The sound that we made the very first time we met, it was magical. The sound was so beautiful. And when I sing like that, it transports me. And that, that's the way I felt. I felt like I am where I am meant to be. This is going to be one of the greatest memories that I have. And that's exactly what happened. It was, it was fabulous. When we were in Los Angeles, we remember Keisha, they asked if we would be willing to talk about our work in the pandemic. And we kind of stopped and we looked at each other and we were like, I don't know, how do you guys feel about that? Yeah. Is everybody up for it? And then we decided, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll do it. And it was um, painful. They had to stop the taping because the people yeah, in the room were crying. Yeah. yeah. It was unbelievable. And we were crying because we were reliving everything. It's the first time I think we really, as a group, talked about how much we had in common with this horrible road that we were on. It was the first time that we heard other people's point of view because we were all dealing with COVID together in silence. So we didn't really share that until that moment. And when we finally unpacked all of the pain and the sorrows and the anger, we were still strangers at that point because we had just met a few weeks before we went to do the auditions. It was really hard. And we knew that we really weren't alone. Yeah, we had like the lowest of the low where we were just back in the trenches. And then we got on stage and we sang and it brought us like it was the high of the high because music was music was a way to dig myself out of it. I just feel bad that every nurse in the country can experience what we experienced because it was extremely helpful for me personally to get my resilience back. Mm -hmm. You know, like I love to sing and I didn't really sing during COVID. Everybody seemed to put away, I don't know, a lot of the things that what brought us joy. Yeah. yeah. Everybody put it away, put it on the back burner because you just didn't have the strength to do it. When we finally got the choir, we had that outlet to finally release and like I grew up singing in church I used to sing every weekend whether it's praise team whether it was the choir and with COVID we didn't have any of that so we were able to come together and relive the joy that we had before this pandemic. As nurses we work and we give and we serve and then we go home and we give and we serve and I, I don't know if the public really understood that when we went home, we had so many obligations. My husband has stage four cancer. We all had obligations besides our work. And so it's not like we could go home and decompress and go to bed. We had other obligations. And I think for me as a leader and, and Keisha as a leader, I saw a lot of my staff run out of gas. It's just almost like they had nothing left in their tank. And part of it was the work especially the young nurses, they don't have anything to pull from. You know, I lived through the AIDS crisis. They started in the middle of COVID, so they don't even know nursing before COVID. Like, this is literally yeah. all they know. It burned them out. It burned, it burned yeah. all of us out. I remember as a leader in the middle of the pandemic, I had to be that punching bag for them. I listened to their sorrows. I listened to their angers. They just wanted to vent. They needed someone to speak to. They needed to release. As a leader, you, you just have to sit there and be that person for them. Keisha, I just wanted to pick up on this piece about the young nurses and the new nurses. And they're not always the same. Mm -hmm. So you have youth, which you don't have a whole lot of exposure. And there's a certain tenderness. And when we all start in whatever career that we're in, hopefully we're not being thrown into the deep end and seeing mm -hmm. the most difficult and distressing crisis parts of it. So you're on that younger end. Can you think back to an experience that you had with some of the newer nurses who are also young? What did they tell you? What did you hear? They just weren't prepared for this. They left nursing school. They learned everything that they needed to learn to do this job, but they weren't prepared for everything that it came with. And 
they felt like they were just thrown into it. But we also were thrown into it. Having experience, we were able to maneuver a little bit easier, but they felt hopeless. Anything that we try to do, some of these patients just aren't getting better. The information changed daily also. So it was kind of hard for them to stay on track because it was so new to everyone. I felt as if I didn't have the answers for them. I had to pull from whatever I had left inside me to give to them, to help them to go on. So Winnie, what about you? What, what were you hearing from the nurses you lead? I'm the director of perioperative services and all of my departments, anybody that had critical care experience opened up ICUs and all of our patients were vented. The operating room nurses and techs had to go to the floors to become functional nurses because first of all, it's so outside their wheelhouse and they cried every morning. They cried on top of the fact that everybody in our department was dying and they didn't ask for a lot. You know, they wanted to do everything in pairs. They didn't want to go up to the floors alone I don't know if the other nursing leaders appreciated that because, you know, they wanted us all to do everything everywhere. And I tried to explain to them, let's hear what they need. Let's give them what they need. They're going to be so much more effective. And our job is to take care of our people. I was really exhausted, emotionally exhausted. I really had trouble, even myself, from the 40 years of experience I have to get out of my car and to come up that ramp. You know, I am a a woman of spirit and I pray that I could be whatever it is that they needed. And if they didn't want to take a body out to the, you know, to the freezer, I took it for them and really walking in their shoes and standing beside them. And it was, um, it was just, it was a lot every day, every patient, the nurses kept saying, is it going to end? Do you think it's going to end? And um, I, I felt very sad for the families. I felt sad for the staff. Who wants to hold an iPad like this so that, you know, Sue can watch her mother pass away? How do you recover from that? And so music for me, it was, uh, I'm not going to say it was a lifesaver, but it, honestly, I don't think it could have come at a better time for me. It was great. Yeah, that's one thing about the millennials. You know, they do understand self-care. They do understand how important it is. You really have to find some joy and help yourself to heal. And it's okay to be afraid and it's okay to, to be nervous and it's okay to be sad. Keisha, what about you? Where were you in your work, in your family life, in all the responsibilities before you started on this magical, magical healing experience? Yeah, I was a new leader at the time, and I'm meeting women that are younger than me, women that are older than me, women that have been doing this for the same amount of time as Winnie. And it was really hard for me because um, I wasn't confident in myself at the time because I was like a brand new leader. My experience is a little bit different from Winnie's because I work in maternity. So we had vaginal deliveries and C-sections that would usually have more time in the hospital, but because of COVID, we had to discharge mom in 24 hours after having a baby, going home with a new life and being in the hospital alone, not having their mothers with them, not having their spouses with them. So it was a really hard time being that support system for some of these women. We had to actually be removed from the hospital because the hospital needed to make space So we created a makeshift postpartum unit in ambulatory surgery, which was up the hill from our hospital. And the units that we had left in the hospital that were postpartum were for the COVID postpartum moms. So it was really hard managing. We usually manage four units, but at that time it was basically two units. So I was either up the hill with the moms that didn't have COVID or going down the hill and helping the nurses with the COVID moms. And it was, it was like splitting myself in two because one, it, I had to wait for a shuttle to take me up and then take me down, doing anything that I could do to help them. And I felt like that's what really made the difference. The impact that I made in their lives helped them to be able to do their job. I remember going down to the COVID units and gowning up and asking, what can I do? They're like, 
the food tray, can you bring it in for her? Because I have to help this other mom with breastfeeding and going into those rooms, not knowing what to expect, not knowing um, if the mom was going to be okay. We had moms that we had to do rapids on and send them to the ICU COVID units. And it's not something that we're familiar with. You know, when a mom comes in to have a baby, you're not calling a rapid on her, you know, you're just, you're helping her, you're educating her, you're being that support system for her, but you're not calling rapids. Like it was, we were all pretty much out of our element. My father ended up catching COVID and after being so careful, he still happened to get it. And I blamed myself, even though I would undress in the garage before coming in and run straight to the shower and not greet them the way I was used to greeting them but he still ended up getting it so after going to work and helping out my team I had to come home and then take care of my dad who 72 years old um, he had bilateral pneumonia and he was sick for a full two weeks high fevers for a full two weeks and At one point, I'm like, I want to take him into the hospital. But at the time, they had to go alone. So none of us wanted him to go by himself. So we didn't take him to the hospital. We treated him at home, you know, and then going back to work the next day to be there for my team. It was a really rough time, really, really rough time. So that that was pretty much my experience. I did take a lot of time for self-care, though. Like Winnie said, I would make sure I would have my bubble baths, whatever I could to pull back and have time for myself. But it was hard because you were still alone. So as I'm listening to you, the two things that come to mind is capacity. Where did you find the time to fit in singing in a choir? And the other part is the weight of the work and the responsibility that you're carrying. It seems like it would be really easy to say, I just don't have it in me to let a note out. I, hmm. Singing do, re, mi seems beyond what I'm able to do. Let's start with the emotional capacity. I mean, when, when you have this opportunity, is there something that you need to get over emotionally, mentally to come into being in a room? Or is that a magnet that says, this is the thing that's going to, help me in my self-care? For me, it's definitely prayers. I relied on God a lot. I prayed for the staff. I prayed for myself. I prayed for our families and their families and all the lives that were lost, you know, praying for people to heal through that. And I also had to get a therapist myself because um, it was hard emotionally. Not only was I in the choir. I'm also in school doing a women's health nurse practitioner program. And that was challenging too, because when I applied for that program, it was prior to COVID. So I was so excited to start. And then we were on lockdown. I had my interview virtually on FaceTime with the director. I've never experienced education like this. For me, it was just a big shock. And I was like, I didn't know if I could do it. I didn't know if I could do it. It was too many new things at once. But prayers definitely helped. Therapy definitely helped. Leaning in on my my circle, my support group, the choir. When we say that we're a family, the camaraderie is palpable. We rely on each other so much. We've helped each other in different ways, in ways that we didn't know we needed. Everyone's going through their own thing. Some of us battle with our own mental health issues. Some of us have family problems. Some of us have sick family members that we take care of. Some of us have sick children. Like there's so many things that we all battle, but we're able to rely on each other and to lean on each other and give each other that support and uplift each other. So all of that has helped with my emotional well-being. I, I think that's what helps with my capacity. There are so many unique characteristics to this choir. You talk about them being family. And I've, I've heard that. I've seen that. You hear that in the voice that's singing. But when you go look at the choir bio page, in most choirs, what you will see is somebody's voice, soprano, alto, tenor, bass. 
Um, but when you look at the Northwell Health Nurse Choir, what you see is the type of specialty that they work in, um, the type of people that they are taking care of, the conditions that they're experts in. So, Winnie, why don't you tell us a little bit about the choir? Who's in it? Other than being joyful singers, what are some of the other things that people may not understand when they're listening to them singing that you'd like them to know? Okay, so if you look at this choir and you live in this choir, it's very, very similar to the teams we work with in the hospital. So in other words, people coming together with the same mission, the choir is the same thing. All of us come from, I believe, 11 different hospitals, all specialties, a lactation specialist. I'm the director of perioperative services, Keisha's mother, baby. We have NICU, neonatal intensive Mm -hmm. care nurses, pediatric intensive care nurses, nurses from all over. We have nurses from Manhattan, Queens, the Bronx, Brooklyn, Long Island. You talk about diversity. There's not one of us that's the same. Yet when we came together that first day and we put the music on, spectacular. I mean, I was proud to be part of it. There's also a lot of mentoring in the choir. We have young people who are looking to navigate, maybe become an educator. Next thing you know, we're having a round table and we're trying to help one of the nurses figure out her future, right? So we all are bringing something from a different place or some of us older ones, we take one of the younger ones under our wing and, you know, we're learning from them. They're learning from us, not just nursing stuff, but life, life experience, things that I've experienced that they look at Keisha. She's in school. Sometimes she runs out of gas and I keep telling her, Keisha, stay with it. Hang in there because you're going to look back and you're going to say, I did it. It's done. So we, you know, she looks to us for encouragement and I look to them to teach me how to embrace self-care. I hear the joy in your voice, and that hasn't been a lot of the experience of so much of the care that we're giving. Can you talk about that transition of the therapeutic experience? When you're singing, what happens inside of you that is healing for your soul, for your body? You're going to be encouraging everybody to sing and sing as choirs. What are some of the therapeutic benefits that are happening? How is it helping you to heal and take care of the the injuries and build a mental fitness? Like Winnie said, the harmonies and all the melodies, you transcend. You forget about everything and you just live in that space for a moment. Hearing the sopranos and the altos and the tenors and the baritones just blend together, it just gives you this sense of peace. It's like we're working together on the unit, but instead musically coming together and we're being supportive and we're being there for each other. But this is through sound. We're blending. We have our harmonies down pat. We have the words together. It's like an escape as soon as we start singing. And I think that's where the healing component comes in for me because I don't have to think about anything else in that moment. I mean, yeah. And there's something about music, even if you're not a singer, it's like the ocean. Music has some kind of a hold on you. Like Keisha said, when you're in it, you're in it. And it's also this tremendous sense of appreciation. So the sopranos go in and they record and then we record. And then when we get together, people will say, oh my God, I can't believe how low you can sing. Or I say, Keisha, you hit that note. That was incredible. And it's, it's everything. It's the music. It's the appreciation. It's the sound. It's, it's ours. So what is it in singing and performance, being on stage? What are the things that, from this experience that you're learning that are actually helping you to be better as a clinician, better as a teammate, better as a member of the Northwell Help? I guess the number one thing that was important to me was that we stayed grounded. Our mission, our ministry was Let's get out there and let's help our fellow nurses understand that they're going to be okay, that we're still here. We're resilient. You got to find your resilience and you got to come back because we need you. And I feel in the response that I got from the public, my family, my coworkers, Northwell Health, everybody seemed to get the message. Like it really brought people together. It was an unbelievable instrument of unity. And to me, what's better than that during the pandemic to be able to bring people joy and bring them together? Clinically, how 
how has your practice changed and improved from the skills that you've learned about singing in a choir? It changed my practice in a way where I felt like patients need that encouragement. They need to feel inspired. And just like we give that inspiration when we're out there doing interviews or whenever we sing, I felt like I wanted to bring that back for my patients. So one thing that I would say is a little different with my practice is that when I'm cheering a mom on or when I'm giving her the tools that she needs to take home this new life, I show her like, listen, you can do it. I was pulled out of my element to do what we are doing right now and giving inspiration to people around the world. I give them that same encouragement and try to give them that same inspiration so that they feel confident that they can do this. And I felt like being in front of reporters and having like these Zoom interviews and being on podcasts and just sending out all this love and inspiration that we do for everyone in the world has given me the chance to give that back to my patients. So Allison, as far as an organization, everybody's looking to hire nurses. There's a real challenge with retention and hiring. How many people are applying to Northwell because they want to be a part of the choir? (laughs) It's a great question. You know, I I don't work in talent acquisition. However, I can tell you that I get emails all the time. We get emails, messages on our Instagram. How can I join the choir? How can I be part of this? And, you know, we, we can't take more. We, we are at our max capacity, but you know, the message that we send back is, you know, continue, find something that you love and keep doing it because these people, it's singing, other people, it could be knitting or reading or riding a bike, whatever it is, do something that you love because it, it does, it transcends you into this different place. What organizationally is Northwell learning that other organizations could learn? What are they learning from the standpoint of the care and the well-being of the healthcare workforce and taking care of them so that we can take better care of people who visit us in the hospitals and the people in the community. One of the goals for 22 for Northwell Health is the healthy work environment. They did a survey of almost 18,000 of us of what it is, what can we do to help you? And I thought it was brilliant. And one of the things they're talking about is the actual environment. So we have people that sit on a board now from each hospital, each division, and it's about let's let's make a nice uh, break room. Let's let's put in new bathrooms like and although it sounds simple, you know, like my hospital is old, you know, it's been around a long time. And so something as simple as that, when I go to have a cup of coffee and I can sit in a, a pretty room and not only that, but there's opportunities for meditation and yoga and walks and hikes. But the fact that they asked the frontline staff, I thought was very respectful to say, what is it? What can we do to help you find your resilience and get you emotionally, spiritually, and physically back to where you, you want to be? And it's, uh, I'm, I'm participating in a bunch of it and it's, uh, it's great. Yeah, I agree with when they've created a lounge at the, un- at the hospital that I work in, um, just for you to kind of get away from your unit, you know, when you need that break, when you need that mental break to just go down there, have these lounge chairs because they understand how important self-care is and they understand how we really need to refuel in order to be the best that we can. They provided so many support over the years. I've been working with Northwell for over six years and I've noticed the difference. I've noticed how many emails they send about all the resources that they have to support us mentally, emotionally, physically. Another program that they do is Code Lavender. So whenever something happens on the floor that is traumatic, you need to debrief and take a break and process what happens. We had a a demise not too long ago, and it was really hard for a lot of nurses, especially some of the new nurses that have not experienced that yet. And Code Lavender came up and we had a huddle and we were able to express our feelings. We were able to express our anger. We were able to express how we felt in that moment. And the fact that Northwell provides these resources for us to be supported is just amazing. They've been wonderful. They've been wonderful. They understand how much we give and how much we do for the facility and for our patients and everything. And Allison, Mm -hmm. you had mentioned earlier about bringing in all of the resources that are needed, making sure that they were set up for success 
Why do you think it's important that their performances are at a high artistic standard and are produced and performed in a way that expresses the level of professionalism that's there? It was important to us that they put their best foot forward. They are not professional singers. Some of them could read music, some of them can't. Some are shower singers who are great and talented. And when we were given this opportunity to surround them with the resources they needed, it was the first commitment and the guiding principle that we used in every plan that we made. We will give them the resources they need to succeed. I mean, it was everything from working through union negotiations and HR and having their time off to to then the music side, making sure that they had the best scrubs they could find for national television and that their hair and their makeup and their shoes and everything to take care of these humans who took care of us. It was the least we could do. And America deserved to see who these humans are and every experience that we have. I'm just overjoyed at the more America could learn about them. They have a following that you wouldn't believe. Sometimes I go into their Instagram account and I'm just reading through. We have one example I shared with Winnie recently, this this little girl, she's maybe 20 years old, Down syndrome, and she studied every single choir appearance. She knew every arm raise and every turn and every move. And to see, it just started out as like, let's do it for these 18. Let's do it for the 78,000. Let's do it for the nursing community. And by the final episode of America's Got Talent, we sat around in a huddle and we said, you guys are here representing all healthcare workers around the world. Like this is much more than the 18 of you. This is no pressure, but like, you know, <laughs> this is way bigger than when we ever could have dreamed. And making sure that they felt comfortable and could put their fears and their worries and their stress and their anguish behind them and spread some joy is all we could do. When we see them on stage singing, we have a sense of just what star performers they are, how capable they are. And there are moments when I wish I could take my other colleagues who are not in the clinical realm and say, if you think that they're good at singing, you should see them helping a mom give birth, helping a family navigate Mm -hmm. a child's diagnosis with epilepsy. You should see them as they are expertly and compassionately helping somebody to figure out a direction with end-of-life care or treatment decisions with oncology or evaluating genomic results. Mm -hmm. And I have pointed to when people talk about how as, a, as an ensemble, the ensemble work that they bring as individual performers and voices. And I said, yeah, and just imagine what that's like when you go to get care, that mm-hmm. they bring that same level of diligence and expertise and attention to every single note, every single gesture. That's one of the things that I have found so valuable about this choir is that it gives people an insight into the level of detail that nurses bring to the care that they're delivering to you. We talked a lot about the science of nursing out in Hollywood. It was important for me that they know that we are scientists and that there's a lot of education and best practice that goes behind what we do. It was important for me that they know that, okay, we're singers, but we're so much more. We were nurses before we were singers. And that's really what our gift is. And it's what we're really good at. And like Allison said, we're not professional singers, but we are professional nurses. And that was a big part of our story in in America's Got Talent, because it is Hollywood. And we wanted to let them know that we're so much more than what you see here. And I think that they responded to it. I think back to the day we arrived in Hollywood. You have these nurses show up in on this set. It is a a system. They have it down pat. They've been doing this for 16 seasons. They know what they're doing, a well-oiled machine. And you have these nurses descend onto them. 18 is a presence during COVID. You know, it was April of 2021. Things were not comfortable. We were nervous getting on the flight and we arrived there. Mm -hmm. 
and they put on their white tops and their blue bottoms with their clean white shoes. And they looked like armed service people. And they walked across the street in downtown Pasadena and people stopped and they thanked them for their service. Like, like they, they were fresh off a, a Navy boat. It was, it was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen because they were getting the respect that they deserved. And finally it took COVID to elevate the nursing profession and for people to truly see what these angels do. It's, it's mind blowing. It was, it was so beautiful. And this is a moment when healthcare systems are collapsing, um, where we have nurses who are struggling. They are overwhelmed. They are sad. They are scared. You, you know this better than anybody else. Um, what would be your call to action at this moment in time? It's so important. Like, These people come to your organization because they love what they do. They love being doctors. They love being nurses. They love being in the healthcare setting, but they also have to love what they do and do what they love. And doing what they love is what the choir gets to do. They get to sing. They get to be who they are. So so pick up your your talent, pick up your passion and, and make time for yourself because you see the joy that it brings these 18 and everybody deserves this. I think the thing for me, for Northwell, is that they're very inclusive. They just go out of their way to find things to have everybody feel like they're part of the solution. They have these business groups, and there's women in business, and there's pride, and right, Allison, all kinds of things that you can join. Our CEO, Michael Dowling, is a down-to-earth guy. He's out there with the group. He's fun. He's inspirational. And it starts from there and works its way down. So even before the choir, I feel like they just try to make everybody feel welcome and included. And there's nothing that they won't do for whatever group you're in to make you feel like you're part of Northwell Health. And I think that's what they do very well. And I'm very proud to be part of it. Special thanks to nurse and tenor Winnie Mealy, nurse and soprano Keisha Jabong, and Allison Lowenfeld from Northwell's corporate marketing team for sharing their story, experience, and voices. The Northwell Health Nurse Choir's journey began in 2020 during the crisis stage of a global pandemic. And it began with an idea, an invitation, an email, and a willingness to create something that had yet to exist. Something Winnie described as unlikely, a bit awkward, and a little nuts. But when a partner organization reached out to Northwell's leadership with their idea for a choir of nurses, Northwell said, yes. Prior to auditioning, The nurses didn't know each other. They came from different hospitals, nursing specialties, and areas of New York. Nor did they imagine how the power of choral singing as a group of nurses would be therapeutic, a form of self-care, and help them forge a special bond, something they've leaned on as they've soldiered through and nursed on, and how singing in a choir would so mightily lift their spirits and the spirits of all who would watch and hear them perform. 
in June 2021, the Nurse Choir auditioned for the hit show America's Got Talent and successfully advanced to the season 16 finale. As a result, the choir has been honored to perform at the White House, Madison Square Garden, and Carnegie Hall. The choir's unique experiences during the pandemic, coupled with their mission and joy-filled experiences, leaves its members humbled to continue using their voices and performances to represent and support nurses, all while continuing to care for patients. Northwell Health is New York State's largest healthcare provider and private employer. They care for over 2 million people annually, and that caring begins with a commitment and resources to caring for their team. For See You Now, I'm Shauna Butler, inviting you to sing along and show your appreciation for the nurses in your life. Nurses are transforming healthcare through innovation, compassion, and leadership. And Johnson & Johnson is proud to continue its 125-year commitment to champion nurses through recognition, skill building, leadership development, and more. The American Nurses Association is dedicated to building a culture of innovation. Nurses improve the lives of patients and communities through innovative thinking, empathetic connection, scientific rigor, and sheer determination. ANA is proud to support and advocate for our nation's most valuable healthcare resource, our nurses. For more information on See You Now and to listen to any of the earlier episodes in our library, visit seeyounowpodcast.com.